Hi, everybody. You're listening to Let's Talk ETC. I'm your host, Carlo V, along with my co-host, Dr. Christian Severino. On today's show, we've got a really special guest with us tonight. Stuart McKenzie goes by SJM on Slack. He's been working on a ton of stuff for the ETC community. He's part of ETC dev team. So we're really happy to have him on to uh, get some info on a lot of the stuff that they're doing for ETC and the ETC community and just really pushing the project forward into new paths and new things that uh, the community wants to accomplish. And we're just really happy to have him on. So uh, Stuart, uh, thanks for coming on the show or SJM as many more people will know you. I know how it is in the online community. Uh, everybody's got handles and stuff like that. So thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> At yeah, two absolutely. Two, two o'clock in the morning in Hong Kong time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so for anyone listening out there, I actually <laughs> didn't know it was so late for SJM. So uh, double thank you it's for okay. being on the show so late. Um, right. We really appreciate it, and uh, I think the community is going to be really excited to hear some of the stuff um, you've got to to well, let them know about that's going on. Well, let's um, not Let's not hype it. Let's not hype it. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, SJM, so something mm. we like to do on the show, um, also letting people know about some of the stuff you're working on, but just so the community gets a feel for the people that are working on the project and some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, um, and just to kind of connect everybody with some of the key people that are working on cool stuff mm. for ETC, uh, just give a little bit. Uh, everybody that's listening, a bit about your background, kind of how you got into tech or development and stuff like that. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of history so people get to know some people behind the scenes. Uh, well, okay. Um, after high school, I remember um, backpacking around Europe and uh, I'm thinking, gosh, what, what, what was it I really wanted to do? I went back to South Africa and, and, and picked up uh, computer science at the University of Johannesburg. And um, since then, started you know just working in different companies and you know, traveling the world as well. And um, yeah. came out to Hong Kong. Um, I actually really liked Hong Kong. Um, you know, the government sort of works here, although some might uh, disagree. With how, now that it's becoming more and more <clears throat> Beijing oriented, but mm. um, but you know, uh, it's it's a, it was a lot better than 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 uh, the corrupt government of South Africa from which I was born and raised. I see. Um, and yeah, just sort of working out here and doing my own thing, involved in open source projects. Um, over the past couple of years, I've been working on my own um, programming language. Um, well, it's, wow. more like a, it's more like a DSL. <clears throat> OK, so you're developing um, your own. That's kind of cool. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it, it's, it's, it was, it's, quite, it's good fun. Um, it's it's basically it's a it's a it's a flow based programming language. It's called Fractalide, and um, yeah. And so so the idea behind this was to create a programming language where each of the components is reusable as well as reproducible. Hmm. And um, and I was uh, I was collaborating with um, uh, Professor Peter van Roy out in the University Catholic de Louvain. And uh, he, he, he sort of like, you know, he, he, he offered me to, he offered whether I, I, I would um, supervise one of his master's students. And um, I, I accepted that. I had a uh, key to create a control over this, this project. And uh, we set about implementing Fractalide. Now, if, if, if some of you remember, this is, this is going back quite a few years. Do you guys remember HyperCard? Yes, that was on Apple. Right. Yes. That's, that's a that's a Christian question. So there you go ahead. <laughs> I don't know much about as you, as you guys know, but at least you heard of it, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 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 HyperCard was a uh, quite an interesting uh, um, program in, of its day. Um, it allowed you to do some like it was it was like you know non programmers could could come and start creating programs and and start sharing them with people and it was like the first sort of like rapid development. Uh, r rapid application uh, development uh, RAD type environment, and um, I remember looking at this, thinking, "Bloody hell, this would be this would have been a really good like uh, internet uh, you know browser." So, so one of the one of, uh, so th th this is the main sort of idea. I, I wanted to implement. I wanted to swap out this HyperTalk. Now, HyperTalk was uh, sort of like an English language 
um, that you would use to program this this uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to swap it out with these components, these re reusable, reproducible components, which would actually be the the programming language of this hyper card implementation. Mm -hmm. um, so we sort of set about doing that, but we we've <laughs> we, we we got the underlying language uh, working, the reproducible, reusable uh, stuff. Um, that's that's sort of working, but we haven't got the the hypercard layer um, implemented yet. So we do obviously use that language to implement the hypercard. So um, yeah, actually, and, and I've I've sort of been toying with the, with the idea of actually creating an ICO on top of uh, Ethereum Classic. Um, <laughs> to, I to, to, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, they call it crowd, think, they're crowd funds. They're crowd funds now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, right. oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Like what the ICO is like a bad word or something. Like <laughs> Slap the wrist, eh? I actually, oh. I think it started out as um, a serious suggestion, but then it became so funny that now it's more of a joke than anything, but it's a serious joke. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Stuart, can I ask you, uh, I, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm intrigued back of something you said. Okay, Hong Kong. Okay, so I'm going to, reveal my ignorance but my i've heard hong kong is like the most uh one of the one of the freest countries so you might even say the most libertarian they they pretty much leave you alone yeah. so 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 would you so but you like it so it's so would you agree with that or do they it works pretty well with the government off your back yeah okay so this is this is becoming more of a local issue but but i think things are starting to change now um for example, you get these book book publishing places, uh -huh. they're just bookshops, and what they would do, they they publish sort of literature, which which sort of documents um, what's going on in, in 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 mainland China or Beijing, the Communist Party and whatnot. So, recently, I well, actually about a year ago or so, the actual the bookshop owner was was kidnapped and oh, taken across oh, the border. Boy. Yeah, it was taken across oh, the border. Boy. So, you know, when, when, when journalists start uh, experiencing this kind of behavior, it's, it's, it's like the early warning signs. Uh, they're, they're starting to come in. Um, so, yeah, things are starting to change out, yeah. Um, like, it used to be, right? They, it, it, of course, it yes. Happening. I mean, this is a very strong culture of, of this libertarian sort of like... Uh, uh, as a fair kind of uh, environment, uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, <laughs> so, Hong Kong, good stuff. I I, I like it out here. Yeah, it's uh -huh. now yeah. is is nice. in your experiences with Hong yeah. Kong and South mm -hmm. Africa, or it, it, where were you living when you got into the crypto rabbit hole, so to speak? Because you're into development, you're oh, developing your own language, okay. but where okay. was the segue, I guess, into to blockchain tech? Oh right, okay. Well, okay, so. So I, 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 you know, right in the early days of Bitcoin, uh, this is where it, it kind of gets a little bit cringe, like pain, because I've lost. <laughs> I've it, lost. I've lost. I've lost a lot of money. Oh <laughs> boy! The, the passwords. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> oh, think. Damn um, God yeah. damn it! It's it's <laughs> it's insane how much it's it's yeah. millions of dollars. <laughs> Wow. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, it, it's it's okay. It's I can I can I can see the the account. I can see the money, but it's like it's untouchable. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, well, are you on. saying you lost your private key? Is that what happened? Oh uh, no no the the, the password. The password. <laughs> oh, okay. so, so back in the okay. back in those days, Bitcoin, Bitcoin was a fun thing. It was a fun thing. <laughs> for no other reason. For no other reason. Not for some finder's fee or something. Can can we make it a personal little side project to help connect you with someone to crack that? Okay, so I've already I've already done this. I've already <laughs> done this, man. I've I've I've. Had, I'm sure I've, you have, but keep going. No, don't give up. We believe in you. I've had like I've had AWS a GPUs running like you know brute forcing the crap out of the thing. I've even gone. Of I've even gone really to like password, huh? Uh yeah yeah I've even gone to a hypno hypnotherapist. Guy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god this, this, no. this is how desperate it is. <laughs> so you literally have a, a millions of dollars if you could get this password. 
<laughs> you know, okay, so I think I think everybody has a bit of a story um, like this because we've been in Bitcoin and stuff for a little period of time. The only way I can rationalize it and sleep at night is that I would have sold. I would have I would have never <laughs> held to this, you know what I'm saying? Like the only way any of us can ever actually come uh. to this. So really what you might have done and I'm going to spin this very positively for you, even though it's total okay. crap. You don't, you don't need to do it's, that. But, it's BS, but I, I'm, I'm going to spin I'm, it for you. I'm, I'm old enough to take it between yeah. the eyes. But, no, no, no. This, this might be true. This might end up being true. What you oh, might yeah. have done is invent for yourself the perfect holding device for holding on to your Bitcoin. And one day you're going to crack it and you're going to be a happy man. I believe uh, you. You're yeah. going to do it. Okay. So this this is actually this is uh, one one of the one of the things I'm sort of interested. I'm really interested in building a quantum computer, um, partially because it's really you know interesting from a technical perspective. And but once it's actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but once once I've actually got it working, I think yeah. I might be able to you know. <laughs> Could you oh, please yeah. is sure. there Door algorithm, bang! There we go. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> Could you ever, if you're ever, if you're ever doing like a serious presentation at, like, say, like uh, Oxford, I don't know, just some like prestigious school, just have like on slide one all the benefits of what you're trying to do, and at the bottom an asterisk that just says like, and to crack my Bitcoin password. <laughs> Oh, God, well, yeah, wait, well, yeah. actually, whoa, well, time out. You know what? If I had that quantum computer, you know what I would do? I would ignore your account and I'd go after Satoshi Nakamoto's account. Oh. He, has, he has billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. Well, that, that, yeah, that, 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 that could be. That could be. <laughs> I, 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 none, of, none of this has uh, failed my attention. Satoshi? <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, but the thing is, like, just just getting to the point of building a quantum computer is an utter nightmare. Like, we've been we've been cracking at this for almost two years now, um, and 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 it involves a number of of processes. The first one is to is to pull a vacuum. So, you know, like, yeah, okay, a vacuum. What what's the point of a vacuum? So you you get these. You you can have like low vacuum. You you can get these vacuum pumps which sort of suck out the air. You have to reach high vacuum or an ultra high vacuum. That's like, you know, 10 to the minus 11 um, millitor, which is like deep outer space kind of thing. Um, and once, once you've gotten to that point, then you have to like, you have to have the electronics to be able to control um, what's going on inside this ion trap. And then you've got to make the lasers on top of this. So, so it's, 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 it's a multi-year project, which is absolutely insanely difficult mm -hmm. um i don't know i think at, at, at this rate we probably get it like between five and ten years <laughs> just yeah. be insane <laughs> yeah. it might be like nuclear fusion it's oh. always 50 years away so. oh. no I, no i think i think they've got they've got fusion working recently uh, i think there's a fusion reactor in, in germany if i recall that's actually it's online now, and it's yeah, but and I guess it's well, yeah, I mean, like where it's where it's be a lot huge benefit, and it's very you know above break even and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, anyway, anyway, so so we'll see what what comes of this uh, of this uh, um, this <laughs> this quantum computer. But of yeah. course, we we have to make an ion trap first. An ion trap is a a very simple. Well, the, in theory, yeah. <laughs> it's simple. You trap an ion inside mm -hmm. a a vacuum. And then you can start reading and writing information to this ion. Mm -hmm. um, but then when, when you need quantum computers, you need to have multiple ions yeah. all trapped at once and sort of like communicating entangled with each other. And that's mm -hmm. when things get really get difficult and expensive. So yeah, we can move on from this topic. It's probably too technical. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I, gotta, I have to say this. I was reading recently about... Emerald mm. Wallet. I, I assume you know there was some press release or there it was mm. something on Reddit I saw, and mm. then and that and that was my first exposure. And it said that it was trustless, a trustless wallet. Oh, I see. and I was like, holy moly! What, okay. okay, that's amazing. Can you? No. I don't. I don't know if this is the first mm. trustless wallet, or can mm. you elaborate on that? But that really caught okay. my attention. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Emerald, Emerald is not just a wallet. Uh -huh. Emerald's a set of tools, which sort of like each tool sort of specializes on on one thing. Um, 
and 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 in this particular in this particular this instance of this trustless uh, uh, aspect mm -hmm. is you can have you can have your private keys on another uh, machine which is which has the the, the appropriate security um, uh, barriers and you can actually get that communicating with with Gef or with another um, Ethereum client and that can that can have open ports you know you you can have you you, you can have um, um, uh, in, uh, incoming ports and outgoing ports, which are open to the internet, and a lot of a lot of places um, are hesitant. Uh, I mean, sorry, a lot of a lot of organizations, maybe exchanges and whatnot, are a bit hesitant of doing that. So you you, you can't get this um, you know, peer to peer uh, uh, connections that are happening. So so <clears throat> by by putting your private keys on another machine. Uh, it's basically kind of like a hardware wallet. It's kind of like a uh, uh, a Trezor device, right? Mm -hmm. You can just press a button, and, and you have very controlled, limited communication yes. with yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so this this allows exchanges and 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 well, even even somebody who's running a uh, an e-commerce website mm -hmm. to to have their private keys in a in, on a certain server, which would be which would be um, um, have the appropriate levels of security. And and you you know it, uh, you can have your web servers and and all those other sort of servers in, in your in your in your in your infrastructure um, able to communicate with this thing. Okay. So so that's 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 one sort of aspect of it. Um, another 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 thing is that um, we can also have like a command line interface. So so as 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 Kostya, uh, who's uh, one of the other ETC Dev team members, he refers to this as the dark side of the moon. <laughs> so it, it, this is this is the area where where uh, end users typically won't really go. This is more for programmers. This is more for developers. Um, you know, there's a nice there'll be a nice command line interface, so you can actually write scripts, um, which would automate a lot of things. So you could write, you know, make transactions and uh, query the blockchain and that sort of thing. Um, and okay. of course, and of course, uh, this is also where Sputnik comes into it. So you could you could also like uh, write contracts and and uh, compile them to um, uh, bytecode and run them in, in through Sputnik VM and get an idea of costs and whatnot. So 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 fr fr from one perspective, um, it's just okay. like uh, different tools which can be combined together, and we want to com we want to make it such that. Um, a developer can can include these, like for example, with with foreign function interface or with a, a JSON uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, endpoint, uh, RPC endpoint, um, or or just like CLI. That's that sort of thing. More ways to mix okay. and match this software makes it more easier to build stuff on top of. Sure, sure. Now, when you said Emerald was um... When, when, when I read trustless, for some reason, I was thinking of that you had somehow implemented it in a smart contract and it was decentralized. Oh, and no, like every, say that. People no. talk about decentralized exchanges, right? That's what I kind of thought you hadn't, you meant, but okay. So, and I, oh, I, by I, the way, maybe, I maybe also, I, I didn't actually write that article. So, so okay. I'm, I'm not even very sure which, which article you're referring to, but th okay. That, that would be my interpretation of, of, <clears throat> So for um for, for the maybe that's a bad okay, so interpretation. It was a, mistake, it was a bad, <laughs> for the, bad word. Never did that. Okay. Got sorry it. for for the non technicals. I guess you could say to me this sounds like um or I would describe it sounds like a, like a workbench with lots of different tools to build um, interesting things for etc. Is that uh, yeah way to sum yeah it up? yeah so, well, that, that, okay so so for example okay like let's say you want you wanted to create um, a new Ethereum. Uh, client yes. maybe in exactly. Ruby, for example, uh, yeah. you wouldn't need to re-implement the uh, the the Ethereum virtual machine. You wouldn't need to implement the store, but the basically the database, um, right? Which stores the blockchain. You wouldn't need to implement, for example, the the the, the, the you know the, the trusted part that looks after the the um, the private keys and whatnot. You could just include it because it would be. Um, uh, standard, like you know, like as if you're talking to a C library. Uh, I'm getting too technical. As if you're talking to a C library. It's, no, it's no, basically like a library that you could pull into your applic into your Ruby application or your Python application, and just say, okay, this 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 particular component does one thing and does one thing well. Okay, 
uh, I'll just bring it in and use it. And I can add, you know, the, the sort of like the fluff around the side and make it, you know, add X, Y, Z feature and whatnot. So okay. it, yeah. yeah. So now, you have like, like pluggable uh, uh, components that you could mix and match. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good thing because, you know, like, um, uh, the community can like f uh, maintenance can and and uh, sure, development yeah. can can be focused on in one area. Um, okay. Yeah. Now, when you For were example, talking mm -hmm. about you, when you were talking about the language you were creating, you were oh, using yes. you were using words like you know components and swap this. <laughs> so I wonder if maybe that somehow in your brain you're you you're, sir you sir are are an astute chap. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes, this is one uh, 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 aspiration I've got. I want to use the uh, Emerald tools and bring them into my programming language. In other words, uh, should, should my hypothetical crowd sale uh, go off well, I would, I would, I'd love to be able to build a new team um, to actually bring in uh, this em these emerald components and create maybe a third um, Ethereum classic client, but this is uh, these are big words at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I have no idea whether the community would be supporting of this or not. <laughs> now, this might be a dumb question, but the um, that's just good. Uh, what you're what you're proposing is good software engineering where you break things up into components encapsulation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. isn't why, or maybe they already do, but parity, get, don't those already kind of put things in sandboxes? Or okay. Uh, I suppose they're just different styles of, 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 of breaking things apart. But I mean, yeah, I see, I see parity as rather a monolith as well as get. Okay. It's just, okay. you know, it's, it's a massive monolith. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Maybe maybe when they were designed, they didn't have the intention that people would go in and swap Quite possibly. components. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Quite possibly. But then at the same time, like, you know, there, there's some good engineering that's going on in Parity. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I love Parity. You know, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't fault them on quite a few things. Yeah. Uh, oh, and by the way, I agree with what you said about the, the use of the term wallet. I was talking with Elaine about this, and I guess Bitcoin is what started that, that term, but... I, I've been thinking maybe client is better, or you were proposing a framework. So I, I, I <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 this is just different words, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think I think Elaine's right. Uh, the concept of a wallet, and it yeah. does sort of you know it does it does sort of work well, you know, like where, where, where's your where's your Bitcoin? Where's your Ethereum? That's in my wallet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. So and then also the, about the Sputnik VM. Um, so it's a yeah, library. It's definitely. a library that everybody could. I was reading a yeah. little bit about it. People can talk to it with um, over a, a socket or various methods, and so it's very flexible. Uh, yeah, that was impressive. Now the, these are, these are some of the aspirations, and you know, the, the more the more you allow people, more different ways you allow people to connect and use your software, the more likely it's going to be used. And the more it's used, the more bugs will be found. The more, uh, you know, the more useful it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But 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 I mean, there's still a long way to go. Like, for example, there's a, there's something else that's really important that's happening in in the Ethereum uh, Classic community, and that's the uh, Rousseau work that um, uh, Hoskinson is 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 spearheading. That's the the formal verification of the EVM. That yeah. stuff is really, it's going to be really important for, for us. So I, I'm keeping a, a really close eye on that work. And it's really great that, 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 uh, that Hoskinson came through with this. Really okay. excellent. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, related, I had a question. This is for both of you. This is a people question, not necessarily uh -huh. technical. But I like what you said about the more people that use code, the more bugs, the more help you'll get, the more yeah. eyeballs looking at it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, some people in the audience listening to this might be thinking, wait, hold on. If Stuart makes this library, and if so, I like, for example, you may have heard that Hyperledger, IBM's involved mm -hmm. in that project, they, they ported the EVM. And so everybody could port the EVM to their own little favorite blockchain. Mm -hmm. And 
on one hand, I, it's a good thing, but then do you think like that might provide competition for ETC? That, uh, that, that, it's know? open source. I mean, like, okay, you know, just, yes, just, and I think it's a good thing. Um, That's my answer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Like, like, use it. Go for it. Use it. I mean, it's right. designed to be used. Um, if you if if you introduce it into your blockchain and you find a bug in it and you submit it, mm -hmm. that's great. Then then you, you've you've solved a, a potential bug that could have happened on the Ethereum Classic blockchain. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> we are now more robust and re more resilient uh, as a result of this. So yeah. um, please go ahead. Use it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not really at the stage. Uh, the it, it, blockchains aren't at the stage like where you have. Um, like Android and iPhone, you know, competing oh, yeah. for world domination. We're just trying to have more people use the technology to begin with. Well, I, th I think I think also from from this perspective, um, I, if I'm not, if I'm correct, this is like, no, there are sep there are other implementations of the EVM, like standalone sort of things, but but you know, like. <laughs> Um, something so, like, for example, Ethereum Classic is 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 you know top five. Um, mm -hmm. or the other Ethereum's have got have already got implementations of of the EVM, but they're buried deep inside the client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not really easy to access them. So um, this will be the I don't know, well maybe the first EVM that is designed to be sort of standalone and can be included as a uh, a library through Foreign Function Interface or FFI. Which basically that means almost any programming language can import this and use it. We have not got FFI implemented yet, though, but mm -hmm. it's coming <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to you know make force you to give uh, promises of the future mm -hmm. that you can't keep. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say, with, without without putting you on the spot, but can you say mm -hmm. anything about dates and the the status right now of Emerald and? Okay, um, so I have discussed with uh, with ETC Dev, and uh, I was told not to say Monday. <laughs> okay. I was told not to say Monday, but okay. sometime during the next week, we've got a few more points that need to be knocked off. Um, okay. And I'm also meant to, and I also want to highlight that this is the first release. Um, it's beta. It's 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 you know just it uh, still a lot of work that needs to go into this and a lot of massaging and you know polishing and evolving. I mean we're going to be working on this for for quite a while yet. So this is an initial release. Uh, we can get feedback from the community. I hope the community can be polite about it and constructive, oh, and sure we can evolve do. it from there. They they might be constructive. I don't know about the like polite part. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Right. Never mind. It's all right. <laughs> so buyer, buyer beware is what you're saying. Don't, don't put your life savings into well, uh, Emerald account just yet. Uh, mm, right. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. As for as for Sputnik, um, well, we we've we've just we've uh, Waze just implemented the um, the the home front as well as the, the frontier um, sort of patches, uh -huh. and. Um, the once once that's sort of up and running, we want to get the um, more uh, you know to become uh, become more efficient, and then we would like to sort of include it into Geth. So okay. so so that means so that means basically we've got one sort of like sort of standalone thing which can be applied to multiple different um, Ethereum clients, and this makes maintenance a lot easier across the different clients. Oh yeah. So, yes, so that's, yeah, yes. That's great. So, for example, um, uh, it, it's we we could you know Geth would 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 keep going. Maybe I you know hopefully I would create another Ethereum uh, classic client, and maintenance makes it a lot easier across the two clients. A lot. Yeah, that would uh, be so. Okay, great. hold on, wait. So the the thinking behind I think the Ethereum Foundation was to have multiple implementations to iron out bugs. But now, just to play devil's advocate, right? If mm -hmm. if all of a sudden we, we made everybody use the same code base, we wouldn't have that, that mm. testing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess, no, I hear I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But but you know, I I, I tend to prefer um, a nice, strict, <laughs> uh, tight, uh, safe language 
uh, you know, Russ, Russ is already pretty good at this sort of stuff. You know, it, 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 it wraps your knuckles when you, when you, when you, when you don't do something right. Um, and I also like, I like the direction of, of um, this formal verification of the EVGET. Uh -huh. Um, okay. A combination of these two approaches is going to knock out a lot of bugs. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think I think so it's important. It's important when you have a lot of money on the line, for sure. But yes, exactly, exactly. All right, now let me ask a question about formal verification. Some people might be wondering. So the oh, the gosh. dumb quote unquote stupid way to verify is just to give your code to a thousand people and if see if anybody complains, which. That's basically what the EVM, right? We, we've been using it for a couple years, and mm -hmm. it seems to be so. Now, so what? What is going to be the the benefit of having that formal verification? Because don't we kind of effectively have that because it's been battle hardened uh, um, already uh, from use? No. Um, y yes and no. <laughs> okay. Because because um, um, all right, I, I I'm no expert on this topic. I'm no expert on this topic, but formal verification just basically means that this piece of software does what it is intended to do, and it is proven to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know when you've got millions of dollars on the line, you would you would yeah. you would hope that your software does what it's intended to do, right? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, so so that's basically essentially what it boils down to. Um, okay. Yeah. Does does that answer yeah. your question, Christian? Yeah. yeah well, just, uh, also I mean, to point out that it's more than millions now. What are, what are we? Oh, yes. two, two billion. <laughs> but well, I, mean, I was, I I was referring to a single individual, really. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like well, I don't too. know if I don't know if Bitcoin has been formally verified the the core software, but it's it's the confidence is just in the fact that it's already been battle tested, you know, and so much money of, in transactions has happened. That, and presumably also hackers all over the world, if there was a mm. vulnerability, they would have found it by now. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, Maybe come on. I mean, they're, they're still, they're finding, they're finding bugs in, 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 uh, in um, open SSL, the heart bleed, heart bleed stuff for, for how many, you know, that, that, that yeah. bug was in there for, for years, for years. But yeah, it came out recently and, and caused a There's whole... All, yeah. There's always that one in a million chance, right? What, what? That's you're, you're right. That's that. There's a bug that they haven't found in Bitcoin or the EVM, and so yeah, yeah I can't deny that. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I like the direction of this, this, this formal verification. I think, um, I think, I, I, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm keeping an eye on this project, and it would be really great if we, we could like bring in some of the lessons that this K framework has. Uh, um, uh, so K framework is this. Is it's 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 a, like a language which allows you to implement uh, other languages and sort of like, you know, um, <laughs> basically formally verifies it. It's, it's, uh -huh. it's quite magic. It's quite magic. But there's a lot, yeah. some literature you can read about. Oh, this goes back again. <laughs> this goes right back again to what you started our, the show with, your, your dream of making your own language. Yep. So that, that seems uh, like yeah. Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, well, yeah, I remember... Um, uh, when I first started looking at it, I, I actually picked up the K framework and started playing with it. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll get around to it at some point. But uh, okay. this, this uh, EVM uh, project that, that, that Hoskinson's has got going is a, quite a good starting point, I suppose. Okay. Oh, and, and then if you could just make a, a comment. Uh, so I've been impressed by ETC dev. Um, I, mm. from, it sounds like Igor is super talented. And then Elaine, <laughs> Elaine says you don't have to be a genius to, to help out ETC dev. But uh, I mean, are you like, are you guys, do you just sometimes just go, wow, man, the, the level of talent yeah. that I'm working, working with? So, so it, 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 I, I've recently been getting, uh, getting to know Elaine uh, a lot better. She, she's really an interesting person. Um, I encourage the community to get to know her. Um, Splix, Igor is, Igor's an, he's a, he's a war horse. <laughs> yeah. This guy's, you know, he's, he's been around, you know, <laughs> he's, he's worked for um, a number of big companies out in Russia and um, different places. So mm -hmm. you know, he tries to keep things as practical as possible and, uh, you know, down to earth, which I respect mm -hmm. and I like. Um, and, but not only that, he's actually very good with the team. He's very good with the team and giving people mm -hmm. space and allowing them to, 
sort of do their thing. Um, yeah, I respect that. He's, he's a good leader. He's a good leader. Oh, okay, that's yeah. yeah not 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 every developer has that. Skill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not every bit that not every developer's got this. Kind so this is an interesting happen. aspect about about Igor. And I, I've worked with a number of different leaders before, and I can I can say he's one of the better ones. <laughs> yeah. When I think of yeah. uh, great software managers, I think of Linus Torvalds with the Linux kernel. Oh la la. Oh la la. Yeah, he's technically good, but ah oh, my word. When he, uh, he gets a bit he gets a bit uh, rude on the mailing list. Oh yeah, that's um, true. I have heard that too. Yeah. Like, uh, I per I, pers I, I personally I don't mind that. I want to hear a mailing list story. What what's this? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 so, he just if he he's so advanced that if you if you ask a stupid question, Linux just crucifies you on the list. Really? He doesn't have patience, yeah. but, but I'm sure yeah, Igor's yeah. not like that. I'm sure he's more patient. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Look, I, no, no, first of all, let's, let's not make, you know, let's not make uh, um, models. Oh, what's, what's that saying? Don't put people on pedestals or something. Okay. No, don't, don't, let's not do that. But um, yeah, but with Linux Torsfeld, it's a massive community. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. The, 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 the Linux developer kernel uh, um, community is, is really, really huge. Um, they've got these like lieutenant, lieutenant, they're very hierarchical too. Um, and uh, yeah. Stupid questions don't, they don't fly. Uh, Lin Linus will tear into you. So I, you're saying I should join the mailing list and ask a couple yeah, of questions. That would be just, pretty just, funny. Just, just do a few Google searches on this. I don't think that's entirely healthy for a community. I don't think that's, I don't, I, I personally don't mind and I find his, his rants quite entertaining. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if it was a, 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 a community I was involved with or like, you know, as, as a community sort of manager, I would, I would come down on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well presumably, kind of yeah, if like, let's say Emer the Emerald framework takes off. And, uh, yeah. And it, I can imagine, right, you guys having lieutenants. Taking oh, good God. Uh, I, I, I have different, I, I have different um, um, uh, mentality about this, but my, my, my thoughts are quite different from the, the rest of the ETC dev team. And I'm not going to push my thoughts onto, onto them. It's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's a different an approach to things but it's interesting learning from other people and yeah but so maybe guys, maybe if i maybe if i create my own client then i will i will definitely go that direction <laughs> yeah. so you guys the the management it sounds like it's top notch and funding you guys have funding to keep doing what you want to do and that that's yeah really yeah but i mean i don't even we don't even know who's who's behind this i mean like there there are a few people um nice people i don't know who they are but but they, they've put money early in the early days. I think they put money down on the table and basically said, you know, build, build stuff, build useful stuff, make it useful. Yeah. Um, anyway, I can't really comment on this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, well, well from the, that's, that's... there was, there were donations in the beginning, which I mean, oh, okay. typically now have, have 20 X really. So what were mm -hmm. meager donations, um, a year ago are now that's relatively true. substantial potentially. <laughs> I don't, so I don't know. Saying... Yeah. You've got a, you have an account and you have anonymous donators that give nice gifts. That's good to hear. <laughs> oh, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let, let me also encourage this to the community. Like guys, <laughs> the, yeah. developers, the developers are, are in some ways um, an important leg <laughs> of, of this community, right? That's an <laughs> understatement. Yeah. Well, no, I don't, well, I don't want to sort of like, you know, over, overplay and become like an Ethereum I'll, foundation I'll it, kind of I'll thing. I'll do it you know? for you. I'll do it for you. <laughs> no, we, no, no, no. Let's just, no, we just keep, it, just keep it easy. You know, like yeah, the, every member of the community is really important. Um, but, you know, let's not get like this, uh, you know, yeah. ego overflowing kind of thing. But like the development community is really important. Now, in, 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 in um, communities like, for example, Ethereum or other blockchains, they they've had pre mines, you see. So there's an element of incentive that goes along with um, uh, being a developer in these in these in these uh, blockchains or these communities. But in Ethereum Classic, it's slightly different because you know of the hard fork. Um, so the developers that are involved here don't have that that sort of like pre mine incentive um, mm -hmm. to, to to keep people around. So so as as in well. People who buy coins, they sort of come into this buy. Uh, they buy um, coins of other blockchains, mm -hmm. but inside that, there's a sort of like a tax that has been 
in, 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 imposed on this through this pre-mine. Mm -hmm. But when you buy Ethereum Classic, you don't have that. But you don't have, you also enter this community without an obligation, you know, because you don't have that obligation in other blockchains. But with Ethereum Classic, you're not aware of it. But the community, so but what, the developers what, what you need your support. What you mean by obligation is you don't have a bunch of uh, people in a foundation that are their their assets are growing in value. As is that what you're saying? Well, uh, a, well, yes, because the, the developers here we don't have that pre mine. Yeah. So when you let's okay, so let's say let's say the developers of Ethereum Classic have got a pre mine. You buy into this coin. Mm -hmm. And the pre-mine means that there is, you know, there's so much uh, uh, money which has been removed from 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 um, uh, circulation. Circ thank you from circulation, um, okay. which means that you're basically buying, you know, this more expensive coin. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? But now, yeah. but now, let's yeah. say in Ethereum Classic, we don't have this pre-mine, so these these coins are, you know, they don't come with that. So. You, you, you need to, you need to, the community really does need to support the developers. If you don't do that, it's going to really, it's going to, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe we've got some sweet talkers who can organize people to <laughs> pay more, you know, funding and whatnot. What do yeah. they used to, what do they used to do for like uh, PBS or something, the telephone? The telephone oh, that's, right. that's right. That's right. But, you know, we, 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 I don't even think we, okay, so, so there, there are arguments of, of saying, yeah, we should have a treasury. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in theory, treasuries are great things, but whenever you get a treasury, you get bad actors. And how you deal with those bad actors is the important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because those bad actors, can, they can be tricky bastards. They can be really, really tricky bastards. They can play long games. They can manipulate things. They can do all sorts of tricky things. And eventually, once, once they control the, 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 the money flow, then that's it. You see? Yeah. You're over. You're, 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 yeah, you're done. No, I see. You're right. You're right. So, 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 like, like, I personally would be in support of any sort of like sort of treasury that uh, comes forward, but it needs to have an extremely strong emphasis on how to deal with bad actors. Hmm. And this is a formal verification. Yeah, human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you can formally verify people. <laughs> I wish things would but, be but, easier. Yeah, but this is like an arms race. You know, we get like normal human beings and psychopaths, and we, we, it's like an arms race. This is what's basically causing evolution of human beings in some regards. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's, it's enough so I, about that. I, I know your the ETC dev has been very good. I saw about you know sh sh giving a roadmap. I, I saw somewhere they had that for the, the near future. Um, yeah. But do you want to do you want to summarize or kind of make some comments? Okay, so uh, fr from my perspective, I don't believe in roadmaps at all. <laughs> okay. um, uh, roadmaps are a source of great stress, and instead, I would rather encourage the community to stand up and uh, and collaborate. And if if you want to see yeah. something on a roadmap, then get up and start doing it. It would be wonderful to have a community where everybody starts to contribute in different ways instead of sitting on their asses saying, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a bit too emotional. Yeah, but, <laughs> but instead of sitting on their asses saying, give me, give me, give me. Uh, yeah. You know, it'd be much better to see Ethereum Classic as a community of like, you know, people like get up there and really go and do stuff um, yeah. instead of just being hand-me-outs, right? Well, here, here's what I was getting at. I was, I'm trying to get a sense is do you, would you say it, it, we're not at the point where the technology is matured and we're running out of things to do? There's still a lot. Oh of God, no ways. There's okay. so much to do. There's so so much to do. But let's focus on fundamentals at the moment. Let's get you know this EVM verification, right? Let's yeah. let's get people a decent wallet that they can that they can use. Let's mm -hmm. give people infrastructure that that they can actually build out um, uh, websites and you know infrastructure around um, mm -hmm. that people feel confident in that, you know, that their private key is not going to be, yeah. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> stolen. Yeah. Let people, let people build businesses on it. Mm -hmm. And when people build businesses and start feeding their families, then things start to change. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't uh, become such a speculative thing anymore. Yeah. All right, so I, I think, go, Carl, you want to say something? No, I was going to say, um, now, with um, the advent of a lot of this infrastructure that's coming online mm. for ETC and as things start to get built out more and mature, mm. um, since 
especially ETC specifically, takes such a non-interference role in, in community affairs with certain things. Do you envision an IC, an unstoppable ICO mania occurring on ETC at some point in the future? Uh, you you um, raise a good question. You um, know what I'm saying? Because I, I, yeah, I, yeah. we definitely do take a different stance and a, more, a much more skeptical stance yep. in reference to the ICO mania that's going on. But as skeptical as we are about it, um, we are a pretty Aware large market cap. Yeah. yeah, we're a pretty large market cap coin, and I'm not sure there's much we could do to stem the tide if something such as that were to start on ETC. So I was wondering, mm -hmm. do you see that potentially happening on ETC as well, or maybe just the general outlook of the community being different will be able to keep that tide back? Okay. Um... The culture is very much different in Ethereum Classic. Mm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like it so much more than, than, than the, the hard fork. Um, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to reach the same, same scale. And I think, and I think quite yeah. possibly a number of, of individuals will call out um, scammy coins. Um, so... And we, okay, the, the, we've got this uh, tokenmint.io coming up, and I think this is going to be in a very, a very important player in the uh, in the Ethereum Classic community. Um, you've got you've got you've got Elaine. She's hard nosed. She doesn't take bullshit. This one, and don't panic, Burns. Behind this, I think maybe there are other few a few other people, um, but. You, you you can you can imagine like as soon as like some sort of scammy coin gets listed on this thing, yeah. I'm very sure I'm very sure that thing will be shut down. Okay. <laughs> well, at least I hope so. Um, or 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 you know uh, sufficient um, um, uh, measures of of you know transparency will be made available forcefully so that the okay. community can investigate sort of what's going on here. Like oh, do the developers have a sort of like a, a nice you know, GitHub account, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, th I think if we sort of like build in this culture um, of being critical mm -hmm. and not being so easily duped uh, mm -hmm. to hand over coins for, for stupid projects, then we can just with, with common sense, maybe we can, we can do this. Yes. But yeah, look, like I, I really do think there is an element of, of value that, c that can come from these crowd sales. Um, I do as well. I do. As yeah, well. and and yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, I'm I'm kind of hoping that this project that I want to, I want to launch on this, on this uh, uh, token mint. I actually want to set a good example. I want to really try and set a good example. So, I, I'm not sure how early it will be, but yeah, I want to have all the ducks in a row, such mm -hmm. that you know maybe the community can look at this and say, okay, this is how basically a, a good project start, starts off. This is the this is mm -hmm. the barrier. Okay, how do we improve this? Um, yeah, I find it funny that in the crypto community, people blame the ICO or crowdfunding model, and that's kind of analogous to um, when people try to say bad things about cryptocurrency. They say, oh, it's used for uh, drugs, it's used to hide money or evade taxes or, or any, something like that, um, or you know, any other nefarious activities. But um, you, know, you could say the same thing about cash or any other form of resource. Exactly, yeah. So. I think when people see some of the, the scammy crowdfunds that occur, they conflate the, the system or how funds are raised with the projects. No, if you have a very efficient way to raise money, obviously scammers are going to descend upon it. But cool. it doesn't mean that the model in itself is a, a bad thing, just like uh, the IPOs from the 90s. Obviously, a whole ton of projects yeah. ended up using the model and, and diluted it but no, a lot right. of great a lot of great projects came out of um what yeah, I know when I whenever I teach yeah. a blockchain class the analogy I use is you could use a brick to build a church or you could hit somebody over the head with it throw, throw yes it so much more elo every much more eloquently said that by you the, thank the, you the, the brick is amoral it's not good or bad right yeah, exactly. But I, wouldn't, what I, I wouldn't say so much about the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, you can use a brick to build a charity shelter. <laughs> that's right. So. 
depends on the church, I suppose. But um, <clears throat> you get the idea. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. All right. Yeah. So uh, have we yeah, sure. have we um, covered everything? Did we miss any questions, Stuart? Did you did you kind of say uh, everything you wanted to say? Last chance. Actually, uh, uh, Carlo uh, finished it off with that with that that observation you made about the the ICOs and how the greed you know how do we stem this this you know pigs eating at a trough kind of thing this yeah. this degree of greed and i yeah i personally wouldn't like to sorry, in in etc dev sorry in ethereum classic uh community i really wouldn't like to see that so i i, th I think yeah um it's important that the the current community members um the active ones sort of keep aware be aware of this and like <laughs> come yeah, down I, on I come think, down on it yeah. come down I, on it. <laughs> I still i still think that um it's almost like they say when you throw you know crap on the wall and see what sticks um that's what's happening with a lot of this crowdfunding stuff but i think mm. there is stuff that's going to stick and prove it's going to be worth it I, I think there's a few there's a few projects out there that um either that already exist or in the future that are going to be mm -hmm. crowdfunded through these um token raises and I think they're going to be the Amazons and the, the Googles of the, the next generation, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So, ho I, hopefully. yeah, I see, I see that too. I see that mm. too. And, and that's, that's, hope, that's one of the reasons why I want to <laughs> sort of get my little, uh, my little programming language onto a, a crowd sale uh, pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> because it, I, it, it, it's, the, it's the way of the future, yeah. in my opinion. Maybe, well, you anyway. could, maybe you could crowdfund the... Uh, Maybe you could crowdfund the work to be done on the quantum computer so that you could crack your your <laughs> so, password and so, get your own. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I mean, like, like, okay. There is a, okay. When I see, when I see these ridiculous amounts, look, I've been speaking to some um, uh, 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 VCs, and you know, it's like you know, it's, 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 it's sort of the amounts of money that they're offering on the table is, is not that much, you know. Mm -hmm. But when when you look at when you look at what's going on with these with these ICOs, and you just think, bloody Nora. Bloody Nora! I I could fund like a quantum computer with that. Oh, that'd be fantastic! But then, but then you sort of need to sort of scale it back and, and sort of set expectations. You don't want to say, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe the community would 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 want a, 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 a this a hyper card a first level, and the second level would be a, um, an Ethereum classic client, and the third level would be a quantum computer. And I would say, okay, I'm going to do crypto analysis on your on your on on yeah. ethereum classic and ensure that we've got you know post quantum um uh post quantum safe cryptography for you yeah. there we go and if, and if we don't then i'm gonna crack everyone's <laughs> damn straight <laughs> yes <laughs> all your base belong to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> but um actually this was a conversation i just had um very recently how funny it uh -huh. is that the ethereum crowd sale for 18 million or whatever it was seemed huge Oh, yeah. You know, last year that that was like a huge crowd sale. Oh. Eight, you know, eight eighteen million dollars. What was it? But now, um, what is it now? I've I've it's it's funny numbers for me now. I, I actually I don't okay, pay much. So to put this into perspective, a year and a half ago, if you mm -hmm. talked about the Ethereum crowd sale being eighteen million, that was like mm -hmm. whoa! I can't believe yep. they were able to do that. That but is still whoa Bank, for me. Yeah. Okay, Bancor, <laughs> which was a recent uh -huh. crowd fund. That just occurred raised over a hundred million in three hours, and I think oh, more, they had to turn money away. It was really like three hundred million. Oh, what does this Bancor it, thing do? What does it do? What, what's know. its offering? You don't I, know. The, now, now you're going beyond the scope of my <laughs> my knowledge. <laughs> okay. I, I is it vaporware? I, is it I'm trash? Not sure exactly. Is it trash? Do, do we know anything? I I, I can't say that it's. Okay. I can't say that it's vapor or not vapor because I don't know enough about the project. Okay, all right. But yeah, it, when anyway. someone dis when someone described it to me, it sounded interesting. But I can't comment uh, without uh, without more info. But I just okay, know well, about the money. When I hear this, I start really. think. When I hear this, I start thinking of tulips. Uh huh. Dot com yes. mania in the late nineties. Yeah. Pets. Com. Yeah. Some, some shit like that. But um, anyway. Um, yeah. So well, well, thank you, Stuart. Thank you for uh, hey, talking great. to us. I'm sure there's lots of people. Yeah, sure, there's lots of people that want to were, you know, interested <laughs> to hear about Emerald and Sputnik and yeah, ETC Dev. So this great. Is great. 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for staying thanks up. So now it's really late. Uh, it was already really oh, yeah, late. Now it's, it's even late. later. <laughs> so thanks so much for for staying up and and coming on the show. We'd love to have you on again sometime. And uh, yeah, uh, we'd uh, appreciate um, you know you coming back at, at any time. And we'd love to have yeah. other people from ETC Dev, and I'll, we'll reach out to them to get them on here as well to talk about all the cool stuff you guys are doing. Cool, hey, and thanks to you guys for uh, keeping the communication, the dialogue for the community. It was really good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. <laughs> take care. Everybody, thanks for Bye-bye. Listening. Take care. If you are passionate about anything related to Ethereum Classic and you have something to say,